Welcome to the SQL Offline Interface and Documents video. In this video, I will show you the offline documents and step through the ribbon. A warning, I want to cover all of the tabs in the ribbon, which means I'll need to rush past some features. So I'll begin in the file menu and open an OL file. This loads an offline document which displays a grid with columns and values. In the Ribbons Data tab is a file menu that I use to open a data file. Now I'll select a SQL Server Compact SDF file. Open initializes the SDF file which displays in the source window. And next I'll use the Server menu to connect to a data server. Note this is where I can enable passwords. Now I connect to a Windows Azure SQL database enter a password, and the connection displays in the source window. I select a table in the source window and click Open in the table menu. This creates a new offline document. The Documents tab here allows me to select a different offline document. The OL in the tab shows me that the document has been saved to a file. To modify the table, I can change a value here and then use the Write menu. For now, I just want to preview changes, not commit them. So here I can verify that I changed the email address. I can also read from the data to refresh an offline document. This reverts changes that I made to the email address. Now the Browse button here displays the data link from the offline document in the source window. So that's the Ribbons Data tab. Before moving on to the SQL tab, I want to talk about Unicode. SQL Offline displays Unicode encoded in UTF-8. To show this, I've opened a table that contains a variety of languages. Now, I cannot edit the text in this form, but I can copy and paste it into a text editor. For example, I copy to Microsoft Word, which displays appropriate fonts. If I modified text in Word, I could paste it back to SQL Offline. One important place that displays Unicode not encoded in UTF-8 is the SQL script document. To see this, I write SQL script for a new table. I should note here that the SQL runs correctly even though the font does not display all characters. So far in this video, I have shown you the offline OL document, SQL script, and looked at the ribbons data tab. Let me close everything here. Really, that covers the basics. Next, I'll move on to the other tabs in the ribbon. This is the SQL tab. So far, the SQL script I have shown you was generated by SQL Offline as part of a sync write. But I can also open an SQL file. This is an SQL file that I saved earlier. Now, the connection menu allows me to initialize before running. But because this SQL script includes a connection, I can run without first initializing. I click Browse to see the new table listed in the source window. OK, that was the Ribbons SQL tab. Now to the OL tab. The OL tab is used to work with offline documents. I click New to create an offline document, and click Format to change it to a 3x3 grid. Now I'll expect it, but I do want to note the Data Source dialog box. I select an SQL connector, because without a connector I cannot sync with data. OK. I click Columns here to display the Column Properties dialog box and add some columns. There are three column types, text, data, and formula. A data column has a data type. So here I change the column type to currency. A note about the list on the Column Properties dialog box. I can drag and drop to move columns in the columns list. I can also cut and paste columns between offline documents. So after closing the Column Properties dialog, I can see the new columns. And if I type a number into the CY column, it formats for currency. The data tools on the right here let me copy, merge, and update between offline documents. The rest of the tab is basic row and column edits. Now about this formula column. I double click to display the formula. The default is simply value. So next I want to look at the ribbons formula tab. I select the first cell in a new document and click Formula Column. Here I change the formula to ATN1 times 
row, select set as column default and close the dialog. I can see that I have a pi over four times the row number. Next, I will replace the column formula with the global formula. I hold shift and click the lower right cell to select all. Press delete and click global. This time I replace value with ncal star and row. This displays a multiplication table. So far in this video, I have shown formulas one at a time in a dialog box. But formulas are saved in an offline basic OLB file that is named to match an OL file. Now for more on formulas, I recommend the formulas tutorial in product help. But one thing I want to show you here is the command window. If I enable recording, changes that I make to an offline document are recorded in the command window. Here I'll edit email address in an offline document and the edit is recorded in the command window. And I can edit in the command window to set the email, this time for row 4. Now some neat things about the command line that I simply must show you. The command line supports IntelliSense, and I can control the app and documents. This allows me to do things like open and offline files and even exit the application. Okay, enough about formulas. Let's look at the simple edit tab. Now I want to point out delete, nothing, and null. If I delete, I set a blank string. Delete might also set zero, false, or even January 1st, 1970, depending on the data type. But a default value of nothing means that during a sync write, nothing is written. Now the rest of the edit tab has some select options, find and replace, and I can disable undo to improve performance for bulk edits. I also should note here that you can hover over a menu to display the keyboard shortcut. Frankly, for most of the stuff in the edit tab, I prefer to use the keyboard. And finally, the ribbons app tab. Here I can display windows, such as the output window if I've closed it earlier, or close all open documents. Pretty standard stuff. And here is the final offline file type OLZ, which is an offline package. Packages are compressed and I can put one or more offline documents into a package. Here I add shipper.ol and shipper.olb into a package. Now this makes it convenient to distribute an offline document that has a formula. I can also assign a password. Now the about box displays version information, including version information about the installed client drivers. And the last thing I want to show you is the reset settings. You can set this to reset all default settings and to clear the recent documents list. And that ends our video about SQL offline documents and the interface. Now for detail on features that I passed over, please press F1 to check out our product help. And to get notified when we post new videos, consider subscribing to our offline channel on YouTube. Thank you for watching.